Hello there. In this subtopic, we are going to talk about uptrust and buoyancy. Okay. But first, I want you to have like a thought experiment. Okay. So this is a past year paper from Winter 17 Paper 1 2. You can refer to it in your handouts or in your past year collection. We have a block submerged vertically in a liquid. So this is a continuation of our liquid pressure or fluid, pre fluid pressure where that pressure is given by the equation rho density times height, the immersed height times gravity. Okay, the four diagram shows to scale. Okay, in a rare occasion, they do draw diagrams to scale. The forces exerted by the liquid on the block. All right, so which diagram correctly shows a possible situation as viewed from the side? Okay, so all these arrow will show us forces. So there are a few things that we can tell. Number one, because this is liquid pressure, the force must act in all direction. So B is immediately wrong there. Okay. Force, uh, pressure, force due to pressure, acts in all direction. So I want you to pause the video and think about which drawing would you choose then? Would you choose A, would you choose B, or C, or D? Which one shows the accurate representation of the force due to the liquid pressure? All right, I hope you have an answer. So let's compare the diagram first. Huh? The first thing I notice is option D, the length of the arrows are all the same. Okay, so the length of the arrows here and here is the same, the side here all the same. But if you think about the uh, liquid submerged, right? Let's say, uh, yeah, let's say I draw a water level uh, like that. Uh, these are all underwater. Okay, so you will notice that the deeper we go, the pressure should increase. So as you travel down, H increase, pressure increase, force should increase. But never increase also, this force is constant. So the force should increase as height increases. So D is wrong. All right, so now you're left with A and C, okay? For C, if you look at C, right, this point and, you know, this point, do you notice that it's very weird? It's like telling me that although at roughly the same height, the force is not the same. Up here, larger force. Sideways, smaller force. Cannot lie like that. Not possible. So here you can say, if you want to justify, here, same H should have same pressure and force. So C is wrong. So your answer will be A. Okay. Second thing I want you to notice is, if you look at the forces, right, you can see the forces actually increases as you travel down. So this arrow is getting bigger and bigger. Right. And the second thing is, this force, let's say I call this F1 on the top surface. And then this force down here, let's say I call this F2 on the bottom surface. Please note that F2 is much bigger than F1. This is because when you go deeper, you see the arrow getting longer and longer. So the longest arrow is greater force than the shorter arrow. So the first key note, key point to note here is the pressure at the bottom surface is bigger than the pressure at the top surface. This causes a net force upwards. What do we call this net force? Uptrust, not teacher? Ah, correct, no? This is called your uptrust or your Boolean force. All right, so let's go back to page one and write that down. All right, we'll back, we're back in <laughs> page one in your handouts. This is the seventh and the final forces in your dynamics. We will call this uptrust or buoyancy force. Normally, if I write, I mean, it depends on the lecturer or who is talking. Lah, okay, you can call it uptrust. You can call it buoyant force up to you. Okay, this is the force of an object that is fully or partially submerged in the fluid. 
it can be gas or liquid, uh, meaning uh, if you talk about a hot air balloon, there's also still up thrust. Okay, so this one, this force on an object uh, that is fully or partially submerged in a fluid or gas liquid, comma, due to the pressure difference above and below the fluid, the I mean the object. All right. So this one will be, let's say, for example, I have uh, some water. Okay. And then maybe I have a box here. So it's a box first. They're easy to draw. Okay. So the pressure of the upper face, this uh, top face here, this pressure, let's say I call this P1. Like the objective question, this is P1 which is equal to F1 over A. And then down here, let's say we talk about this surface, and then this one is P2. Mm, bigger force here. P2 is equal to F2 over A2. All right. So it is the pressure difference between P1 and P2 that causes the net up thrust. So the up thrust force is actually equal to F2 minus F1. So you get a net up thrust force if you subtract these two values. Okay. Yeah. With this, we are going to derive an equation to find up thrust. All right, you will see here I have shown the same drawing suspended in some liquid I'm just going to maybe call the liquid with density rho. So inside here is a fluid. Ah. Fluid. And the density is rho. Okay. And here we have a wing balance to write, to, to pull or to read the reading. But let's say now we just want to find what the uptrust force is. Okay. So we know that the uptrust here is due to pressure difference. That's the governing idea of your uptrust force. I, yeah. Okay, so we'll start with that. And I know that pressure is force over area. So force is pressure times area. So my uptrust force is equal to P2 a, look, the area is all the same, right? It's the same uniform block. So this is A. So P2A minus P1A. Okay. Let's recall that pressure for fluid is equal to a rho HG. Okay. And now we need values for H1 and H2. I will draw them out for you. All right. So this uh, is the top surface here to here is H1 and this is the bottom surface do, 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 do. here to here is H2 okay so my up thrust force now will take the format of density H2 A minus okay, density H2 G times A minus density H1 G times A. Can I factorize all the constants? Uh? Namely, density and G. And then now what I have uh, is H2 minus H1 times A. Ladies and gentlemen, H2 minus H1 is the height of the cube or the cuboid, right? You take the bottom surface from the top and then you take the top surface from the top of the water, the water surface. This H2 minus H1 is actually this delta H. Here to here, delta H. So delta H, which is the height of the block, times the area is equal to what? Uh, volume. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing 
become B. And this is how you end up with the equation rho GV or up thrust is equal to V rho G, rho GV, whichever, la, whichever format you want. Okay, do you need to know this derivation? Yes. Okay, you also need to know that the up thrust force is due to, start with this, due to pressure difference. So whenever you don't know or they ask you a statement question in paper one, please understand that up thrust is due to this pressure difference. Okay, so the difference between P1 and P2. And because of this pressure difference, we will have a force difference. And if we subtract the force difference and use the pressure relationship, we can then naturally come up with a familiar equation, rho GV. All right. And some of you may be thinking, teacher, uh, I, I learned this dude uh, called Archimedes. Uh, you know, he jumped in the water, then got the crown one, then he run hand, he sing Eureka, Eureka. Ah, the dude, my dude, Archimedes. Do you want to know more about Archimedes' uh, story about gold crowns? I'll link them down below, okay? But where is Archimedes' principle in all of this? Well, let us uh, look at the up thrust equation a little bit deeper. All right, let us define the terms first, okay? This density is density of the fluid, can be air or liquid, uh, that the object is submerged in. Okay, and then this volume is the volume of the liquid or the fluid displaced. You then may be thinking, Miss, what if I submerge halfway? What if I submerge halfway like this? Like this one? Well, if it's partially submerged like this, okay, your idea of pressure is still the same. Okay, up here, did you up here no pressure? God, got atmospheric pressure. Ah. Okay, let me draw. Here is atmospheric pressure. And here is fluid pressure. Last atmospheric pressure. Remember, atmosphere is everywhere. So, teacher, are you saying that P1 and P2 actually need to plus atmosphere pressure? Yes. But on top here, you plus, bottom here, you plus, and then you minus, the difference will go away. Imagine if you plus atmospheric pressure here, and you plus atmospheric pressure here, they cancel. Minus, ma. okay? So in this case, there is still a net up thrust pointing up. And the height difference is still here to here. Here to here is still your delta H. Because you're going to take the water surface, which is atmospheric pressure. Correct. So your pressure difference is actually due to your fluid, the pressure of the fluid delta H. Okay. So then the volume that we will take is actually this volume, whatever this shaded volume is. Okay. Second thing about this equation, up thrust is equal to uh, rho vg let's say i rearrange this but also i understand that density is mass over volume a a miss miss can put m m is density times volume so these two rho and v can be equal to mg but you hang on to your horses first don't simply mg this is your archimedes principle but this mg is not any mg, yeah? because think about where this m came from. This m came from rho, which is the density of the liquid, and g, and no, not g, rho and v, which is the volume of the liquid displaced. So this mg yeah, is actually the weight of fluid displaced and this is your Archimedes principle okay so not the weight of the object not the object but the weight of the fluid if it's full if it's fully submerged then it's the entire volume so the only thing that they share is actually the volume but the density you have to take the density of the fluid 
Oftentimes, questions may be a bit confusing because they like to give you the density of the block and the density of the liquid. Remember that uptrust is always about liquid. It can be air, it can be water, it can be mercury, it can be oil, it can be anything you want. But that is the density that we use to find uptrust because that fluid allows us to have a pressure difference. Then some of you may be thinking, Miss, as long as I'm in atmosphere, I will always have uptrust, right? Correct? Look at my phone. Uh, there's uptrust right now. The bottom here got more atmospheric pressure. The top part here got less atmospheric pressure. So if I let go of my phone, my phone should float, right? No la. You know why? Because the volume of air that my phone displays is very little. So the uptrust of air is only significant if you talk about big objects like hot air balloons. Ah, if it's not hot air balloon, if it's not big, then the density have to be big, like water or oil. Okay, so Archimedes principle talks about how if there is liquid displaced, if there's an increase in water level, there will be uptrust. And this uptrust is equivalent to the weight of the fluid displaced. Let us write that down. All right, we're back. So this is the official statement for Archimedes principle. Buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by a fully or partially submerged object. Okay, so if you need another visual, here's one for you. Let's say before we submerge the rock in, okay, the rock is 20 Newton weight because gravity is there. Ma. So the actual tension is actually equal to the actual weight, which is also the gravitational pull. But you and I know when you submerge something in liquid, the water level will rise. Now you see this one? Ah, this is the water displaced. Okay, so if I measure the weight of this water displaced, I will find this to be 5 Newton. Because now, the tension is only 15 Newton. You take up force off, so you can see uh, the upward force buoyancy plus T2 will be equal to the down force Mg. So buoyancy will be equal to mg, which is 20 Newton. That mg was 20 Newton. Minus the water displaced. Wait, minus T2. T2? Yeah. So 20 minus 15 is 5. The water helps support 5. Lah. Okay, so this is a straightforward enough and idea. Two things to note, just as a reminder or a recap. We learn that it is the pressure difference between the top surface. I'm just going to call this F1. The pressure difference between uh, the top surface P1 and the bottom surface P2 that causes the buoyant force. All right. Number two, to find this buoyant force, you can use the equation V rho G or rho V G. Depend, doesn't matter. Multiply only. But this is also equal to mg of the fluid displaced. This one. mg of the fluid displaced. It, be careful when using density equations. All right. So go check out the example videos and I'll see you in the next one. But this is the last subtopic for the force density pressure chapter. Well done. You have come quite far. Bye-bye.